Thank you for taking this first step in becoming part of our Housing Ready Communities Initiative. My name is Robert Stromberg, you can call me Bob, and I work with Destination Home, a nonprofit organization working to prevent and end homelessness in Santa Clara County. We hope that you'll sign up and join our action network, and that you also share this information with your neighbors, coworkers, friends, and neighborhood leaders. Yeah. Housing ends homelessness, and we know this. We know that it's not Bob who's homeless who needs to be housing ready, it's the rest of us who already live in homes and neighborhoods. And that's why this initiative is called Housing Ready Communities. And we hope that you'll join us. So we have a homelessness crisis, we have a housing crisis, and what are some of the details about that? Then we're gonna look at some evidence about what is this proven solution to homelessness that we've discovered. There's another piece that we're gonna fit in there after that that's about the cost of managing homelessness. So what is it costing our community today to deal with homelessness? Finally, we're gonna look at progress toward the proven solution that's already being achieved and some of the benefits that this new kind of housing can bring to your neighborhood. And then we're gonna close with again, the action piece about how you can get involved and give you some concrete steps to take to be a part of our action network to end homelessness. This map I always show because it helps to demonstrate that we're dealing with a regional problem. Only with collective solutions and collective impact together can we address homelessness. And every day I would walk 10 or 15 minutes from my apartment to my job. And I would walk past 10, 15, 20 different homeless individuals and none of them were families with children. And I didn't know if any of them were veterans and I couldn't tell if anyone had been a victim of domestic violence or had lost their job. Another fact, for example, 83%, according to the most recent completed survey, of those who are homeless in our county lived in a home here before losing that home. So, just like I moved here from somewhere else, some folks without homes do as well, but the vast majority were our neighbors before losing their homes. The chronic homelessness population, that is those who have been homeless multiple times or for multiple years and have some sort of disabling condition, really makes up about 20 or 25% of the total population. Housing crisis. Who knows that we have a housing crisis? It's on the front page every day, right? The housing crisis impacts nearly all of us. However, we do wanna take a minute to draw a little bit of a distinction between how the housing crisis impacts different income groups. For extremely and very low income affordable housing, that's affordable housing that families earning $65,000 or less can afford, in the last planning cycle, 2007 to 2014, our community only produced 27% of the projected need. Now, if you move all the way to the right-hand side of that row, you'll see 139%. And that's the percentage of projected homes that we needed at market rate. So people can afford to pay what is demanded on the market with no income restrictions whatsoever. I'm showing you this because we know that those who are falling into homelessness come from these lowest income groups predominantly. And if we're gonna prevent future homelessness, we need to focus to prioritize development of housing that is affordable for folks with lowest incomes in our community. In our county, it's estimated there are more than 65,000, it's probably a conservative estimate, renter families in this group. So families earning less than $40,000 a year. Of those 65,000, 70% of them, or 45,000, are paying more than half of their take-home pay in rent. Supportive housing is just housing with supportive services. And this graphic we developed in order to help sort of demystify what those services are. Now, they're the obvious things that you might think of. We're talking about individuals who have some sort of disabling condition and need services and support. And a lot of times that means physical health, mental health, and addiction recovery. But it also means help with employment for those who are able to go back to work. It also means family reunification, so if you're disconnected from your family, you're much less well prepared to deal with an emergency and prevent homelessness. Another is just the engagement with the community. 
People need meaningful daily activities, and they need some way to engage with their community, just like you and I do. That's supportive housing. That's why the housing first approach works. Of all those individuals who are homeless and then are moved into permanent supportive housing, what percent of those remain stably housed one year later? 90%. Now this is a phenomenal success rate compared with any other intervention to end homelessness. Tremendously successful. This can also be seen from our original pilot where we moved the first 1,000 individuals from homelessness into supportive housing. The zero line in the middle, that's when each of those 1,000 moved from living outside into supportive housing. And what you see in this graph is a dramatic drop off in the use of those services simply because you've moved someone into housing. You provide those services inside the building with me so I have a much better opportunity to advance and to heal not to mention the calm and rest and safety of having a home. $520 million. Just looking at county services. And that doesn't include any housing. That's just the cost of managing homelessness. Now the community plan to end homelessness was put into place in 2015 in order to bring together stakeholders throughout the community so we can hold each other accountable and meet the goals that we need to in order to end homelessness in Santa Clara County. And the primary goal of that plan is to create 6,000 housing opportunities. In 2015, there were fewer than 400 supportive housing opportunities, homes with supportive services, in the entire county. Today, we're getting close to 2,500. The amount of the 2016 Measure A affordable housing bond. Thanks to you, the Santa Clara County voters, we approved $950 million so far, the housing bond has created more than 1,400 new housing opportunities that are in the pipeline, under construction, and ready to open, that are now in 11 of our 15 cities. So we're doing a pretty good job of making sure that supportive housing is available throughout the community. We can do better, and we want to make sure that all neighborhoods where development makes sense are moving forward with new supportive and extremely low-income affordable housing. But we're making a lot of progress. What we're talking about is the development of beautiful new apartment buildings with services on site in order to help people end their homelessness forever. This example is currently under construction. It's called Villas on the Park. And it includes 84 supportive housing units, all dedicated to those who have experienced chronic homelessness. Another example is one in Milpitas, and this is a different model. So this isn't 100% formerly homeless. This one is one third for those formerly experiencing homelessness. And then the remainder are these lowest income groups. So extremely low income, very low income, affordable housing in order to prevent homelessness in our community. So you go to housingready.org and you sign up today. And that gets you on our email list so that you receive progress updates about what's going on but also action alerts about how to participate. Other ways to get involved are to check out the calendar on our website. This provides educational opportunities for you to get out and learn more. We'll also be posting notices when there is a community meeting. So you'll see my email address on this last slide, and that's an invitation to let us know that you'd like us to come out to your neighborhood association, or maybe your church has a faith and justice group that would like to learn more about it. We would love to come out and answer your questions and engage you in this work. Thank you for your time. Please do share this with your friends, with your networks, invite others to participate. And I look forward to seeing you at the next Housing Ready Communities Action Network event. Thank you.